Well, you've heard of the so-called black boxes in airplanes. Well, now many cars also have black boxes. Anytime there's a crash, the box becomes a witness, recording information that can help the police find out what, if what looks like an accident is really a crime. Tonight in the Fox Files, in-depth, Andy Banker reveals one of the tools of the new CSI, Crash Scene Investigation. It's the new eyewitness. It doesn't blink. Look at this smashed car. What do you see? The gas tank is supposed to be back here. It may appear the driver's been rear-ended. Showing our significant damage back there. This box tells a different story. So you had pedal to the metal there. Newer cars have computerized systems which monitor your driving habits. So those cars, in essence, know how you drive. Any drastic change, like suddenly jerking the steering wheel or slamming on the brakes, will activate your car's so-called black box or crash data recorder. Something has to wake it up uh, because it knows how you drive. When something wakes it up, the box decides whether to fire the airbags and also records data of the final seconds before impact. That's a five second snapshot. The VCI, or Vehicle Crime Scene Investigative Lab in Lake St. Louis, can download information from the box. And then you can see the tremendous drop. In this case, it shows a sudden drop, then rise in speed. To five, to six, to 16. Suggesting a spin out. He probably spun five or six times. So much for a rear end accident. No, it was a, a head-on collision with another vehicle. This car left the interstate, uh, crossed over the lanes, through the median, through a fence, and up onto the South Service Road. That fast, on wet pavement, you're going to lose traction. This investigation led to a careless driving charge. Police believe speed and alcohol played a role in this deadly crash. The stakes get much higher. David was just a happy-go-lucky kid. Always had a little hop in his step, smile on his face. Two summers ago, David Podwoski died celebrating his 19th birthday, a passenger in this car racing with friends. It just looked like a bomb had went off. His sister remembers the scene and the driver's claim her brother caused the crash. The initial story that we received was that the passenger had reached across and caused the vehicle to lose control. Um, he also claimed that he, the, he was going to speed limit at the time the collision had occurred. Just knowing David, he would have never done that. Police brought the car to the VCI lab. They found out she was right. By taking the measurements. Here, police can measure wreckage against an outline of a car's original size. 101 inches. And break everything down to mathematics. A nine and a half inch difference. There's evidence on that car that's going to tell us what ha has occurred, whether it's going to be some type of the glass being broken out, whether it's a scrape mark or a dent or indention into the vehicle, um, the tires. The end result in Podwoski's case, an involuntary manslaughter conviction for driver Daniel Ossendorf, seven years in prison. The way the vehicle had swerved, he has said that the passenger had grabbed with the right hand, which we were able to determine if the person had grabbed with the right hand, that the vehicle would have turned in the opposite direction it had. There is a relief there to know that he's not out doing this anymore. You know, everything was settled. We knew what happened. You must know what happened in that crash. We look for the truth. Andy Banker, Fox 2 News. St. Charles County Sheriff's crash investigator Travis Jones says the work of the VCI lab has led to 40 prosecutions since 1998, and authorities have not lost a single case. Other area departments are now joining St. Charles County in using the VCI lab.